Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to five tips to help senior couples downsize together. Now today is going to be quite an honest discussion about some things that I have seen and some techniques that I've identified through my years of um, project managing downsizes. So welcome to everyone for coming and thank you for coming along to the workshop and taking the time out to have a listen and have a watch if you're looking at the webinar and best wishes for your health at this time. I'm a downsizing expert. I've project managed a lot of these downsizers and I've met lots and lots of couples. So I've got some case studies and examples and I've got some techniques that I'd like to share with you that I've learned along the way. I'm also a speaker and author of Right Size Your Home, The Empty Nester's Guide to a Stress-Free Downsize and Director of Learning at Right Size Your Home on my, for my online courses. The topics that we're going to cover today are common downsizing issues experienced by senior couples, understanding change as a senior couple, how to work together to achieve your downsizing goals, and then some tips for senior couples, my top tips, and then what to expect from the process. So common downsizing issues by senior couples. This is where my experience in in downsizing homes as, as a project manager for couples is really kicking in. So I'm going to talk to you about the things that I have noticed. You may be able to identify with these issues. And if you do, then you're definitely at the right to webinar or podcast. Um, and we'll also talk some about some solutions and remedies for these issues. One of the big ones, probably the first one, one does and one doesn't. So within the couple, one person is keen and one is not. And I've even had circumstances of where someone has completely ignored it and to the detriment of their relationship. So there's often in over the past few years in a relationship, you may have identified one as the doer and one as the idea generator. Then the other side of that is that that person can actually put their heels in a bit and doesn't want to do anything. So you may identify with that. One does, one doesn't. I've often found in a couple that one can also be quite consumed by the stress and be overwhelmed. And then there's another that wants to get on with it. Although feeling, yes, there is quite a lot to be overwhelmed by and they may be overwhelmed themselves, but they might process it in a different way. So one is more keen to get moving on or one sees a bigger um, prize, I guess, at the other end of the work that's facing you. That bigger prize or that perception of what, what is at the other end um, can be a mismatch of end state. So the desires can be quite different because one may find that end state more attractive than the other. Also, from one side, there may be a reluctance and the point um, of where that has come from is that it feels like it's an end to an era. So our couples may have often had 10, 20, 30, 40, you've heard me say this before, 50 years in a property um, and it really can feel like the end of an era and there may be some reluctance to letting that go. It may also bring on a realisation that you're actually getting um, more senior in years and there is um, some reluctance to potentially accept that as well. It could also be that the job is too hard. It may be overwhelming for a number of reasons and the amount of work is a big one of that. Another one for the job being too hard is also that people don't know where to go. So big project, too much to do, not sure where to start and then don't know where to go can often be those overwhelming factors and, and it makes it all too hard. I often hear my, I've heard my clients reference to the point that they might be thinking it's actually easier to stay than go. All right, and one links the process to losing control. That's another downsizing issue. So where someone has spent years building the home, the family growing up in the home, and then actually getting to the point where they, they are so used to controlling the situation and the home and the life and everything that goes along with it. But letting it go may be actually a sense of failure or loss of control. 
you've spent all these years upsizing. So as one of our lovely participants in one of my workshops says, all these years upsizing, I don't want to capsize at all. On the flip side of this, we need to think about the actual mindset as a couple. So where one is differing in an opinion to another, often there's some a lack of meeting of the minds, I guess, and how they jointly feel about this. Now remember, a couple brings strength. So a couple with good meeting of minds, uh, with alignment of goals, brings strength. It's twice as strong, actually more so. So I'd like to understand or you to think about understanding who is your couple. So if you are a couple living in a home, then, then that is your, your couple unit. But there are other descriptions of couples. So it could be a mother and daughter team, for example, where the father um, is not around or has passed or is no longer together as a couple in the home. It could be um, father-son. It could be a friendship. It could be... Um, uh, I guess a, a group that shares common goals. So it could be two neighbours potentially who are thinking about doing the same thing. But let's have a think about the couple mindset. So the first thing that I would recommend is to align your goals. As we talked about on, on the first slide, a lot of those problems or mismatch comes from goals that are not aligned. And then that builds resentment and frustration in one party and the other for different reasons. So if you do have a meeting of the minds and you do talk about the mindset as a couple, where they've joined forces, aligning goals can actually determine the strength of that force. So what do we want to do together? What is the time frame that we'd like to do? What is the mud map, for example, of the actual project plan? So if you can talk about aligning your goals, it will more than double the strength of the the actual project, the force that's going behind the project, and your shared effort will be far easier to work with. You are in this together. If you can share that vision, then it's important then to actually do that mud map and set out that combined path. So by that pathway, I mean joining the minds to travel down that pathway and actually create those plans you will find that you can enjoy it so much more. You will find an extra element of strength and you will find that that strength more than doubles when, when you're both in alignment. I'd like to share with you my five top tips. So number one is aligning those goals and respecting each other's needs. I talked about resentment before. Uh, and it can build where that alignment is mismatched and where you don't truly feel listened to. So it's so important to actually give your couple partner or your other member of the couple the time to air their feelings, the time to talk about their needs and also respectfully listen to the other side to make sure those needs are heard. It's very important to understand the whole journey that you're going on and understand the impact of change. So I have done another webinar on change and it is absolutely critical to understand that cycle of change and the emotional impact that it does have on you. And it can pass all these emotions through your body about um, being nervous, about acceptance, about resistance. There's much more to it. So it really is important to acknowledge that chain cycle and respect each other's needs when you're setting those goals. You will travel through this change cycle and it's important to remember that there will be emotional triggers that, that happen during this time. My top tip number two is to have a sense of humour. It's so important to have a sense of humour. Humour is important to actually lowering your stress levels. Humour is important that you can share as a couple. It will strengthen you as a couple. And it's important to take those memory snapshots along the way. So whether it be build a photo album, whether it be writing your journal and sharing those moments, it's so important to do. And make it fun. Right-sizing is a stressful process. My book is written as a stress-free guide. I can't 
tell you how stressful this can be if you can't put some humour in and do the proper planning. It's very, very important. Number three for my top tips is remembering your why. So bringing you back to the base of why you made this decision, what benefits it's going to bring to you. So every, every hurdle that you go, you come, you come across and that you experience has a flip side and that's your why. So remember, if you can keep recalling these whys, and it's often important to start, you could put them on a list on the wall, but start the day with actually reflecting on what is going well for you and your whys for this downsize. In my online courses, there's a whole section on what are your whys and mapping those out. It's a really important uh, thing to do is to actually write those down, reflect on them often and live them. Think about them all the time. I talked about aligning goals in tip number one. So my tip number four is building on from that. It's actually writing your project plan together. If you read my book, you'll have some help with your um, working through this process and looking at your plan and it breaks it down into steps. It's critical to do it together because it helps meet those, those goals and it helps do that uh, mindset together. It helps you put that double strength into motion and have that collective uh, mindset and goal writing. You'll find that when you write the project plan together, it facilitates conversation. You can talk so much more about it and every perspective is so valuable because you will also uh, hear each other's opinion and then you'll be able to brainstorm issues together and impacts together. Tip number five is your milestones and your celebrations together. So within tip number four, that project plan, please write in some milestones and have some celebrations there along the way. There's a whole section in my course on rewards. Uh, that's another thing you can do. So recognizing your activities and your um, major events through this project. So it could be finishing a room or it could be doing um, a section of the house or it could be having new carpet laid it could be anything it could be finishing your last charity box or it could be your last item to go to the auctioneer but celebrate that set those milestones and celebrate them and please reward yourself when downsizing that plan, so further deep diving in that plan, when downsizing, doing this together means that you're deep diving into the activities that are ahead of you. It's forcing you to compare, contrast, look at dates, talk about goals, talk about visions. It's such a helpful thing to do. It's probably something that you will never do again and probably something that you've potentially never done before. But deep diving into that planning ahead helps with that whole change management activity I talked about before. It also helps with your stakeholder engagement. There are many people around you that are involved. It's your team of experts helping you through the finance or the property presentation. It's your family, it's your neighbors, it's your removalists. It could be all sorts of people, but there's a whole project management process around this. And doing it together, helps meet those minds and helps align those goals. Setting those plans really means also that you are hearing each other and please be respectful about it. I've seen too many incidences where I've seen couples not do this and where they've done one in an emergency and uh, they haven't respected each other's thoughts and feelings. So if you do it with plenty of time and plenty of patience and plenty of listening, but really genuine listening and hearing each other, and come up with those mutually acceptable terms. You could even enter into an agreement with each other about what are those terms. It can be so helpful. I've seen it work so many times and it's really important to have those listening, the terms and hearing each other as those critical components. So what to expect from the process? Well, when you're talking about working together, things can go wrong. We know in a right size, things can go wrong. But I can assure you that the worst plan is to not to set one at all. 
it's always valuable having a plan. At least you've got something to work to, even if you have to change it. Things will crop up and that means that you can change it. If you've got a plan there, you can work around it. You've got some milestones, you've got some dates, you've got some events and most importantly, you've had the discussion and you've aligned your goals. So then mutually things can change. Along the way, aligning your mindsets is first. And then if you've got that adaption and you've got that tolerance to be able to change and you've got that respect for each other, then it just won't be as stressful. There's so much more on this. I'd love you to read the book and have a, have a deep dive into that some more. There's some case studies there about people who have made um, these plans together and who, well, who have worked well through the process. When there is no plan, it can go wrong. But where there's a plan, at least you can change it and you've got something to work to and you've had the discussions. If you've got any questions at all, certainly email hello at rightsizeyourhome.com.au and we can answer those for you. I suggest that if you want to download a copy of the book, um, free copy of the book, you can head to chapter three. So it's Right Sizing Made Easy getting ready for takeoff. You can re register on our members portal and go to the declutter challenge and find it there. Thank you for listening. And if you want to know more, as I said, we've got the, the book you can download and I've also got the three parts of the courses that you can head to and go further into those activities and resources to help you. Next workshop coming up, stay tuned. There's more exciting contact. We've got the seven secrets to property selling power, and that's to help you maximize the profit and maximize the potential in your home. So thank you for listening. I'd like to leave with my parting quote here. Once you believe in yourself, understand you're doing the right thing. The project purely becomes a logistical process. Belinda Woolrich makes no representation and gives no warranty as to the accuracy of the information and does not accept any responsibility for any errors or inaccuracies in or omissions from the information contained herein, whether negligent or otherwise, and shall not be liable for any loss or damage howsoever arising as a result of any person acting or refraining from acting in reliance on any information contained herein. No listener or workshop attendee shall rely solely on the information contained in this as it does not purport to be comprehensive to render specific advice. This disclaimer does not purport to exclude any warranties implied by law which may not be lawfully excluded. This workshop which includes any resources supplied is only for the use of the intended recipients and is confidential and or privileged. Belinda Woolrich shall not be liable for any errors, emissions, viruses, loss and or damage arising from using, opening or transmitting this workshop.